Hey guys, I'm really excited to show you a birthday present my husband ordered for me. It is a 3x7 corrugated steel raised bed. So I couldn't be any more excited. But um, it came in this tiny box. Of course it was very heavy because there's lots of pieces. But it looks like pretty easy to assemble. And I'm not sure if this is where I'm going to keep it, but once it's together, I'll make sure it's where I want it to be before I fill it up. Isn't that awesome, guys? I am so excited. And my idea for this was to plant it up in the spring with squash and pumpkins, which I've had a lot of trouble growing in my really heavy clay soil. So I'm going to get busy. Now it's blue because it has this plastic coating on it. So it doesn't get scratched up with shipping. So um, you just peel off the plastic. But it'll be a shiny corrugated metal. And it's going to provide a really nice area for me to fill up with soil. So I couldn't be any more excited. What a great gift. No guys, this is not the Blair Witch Project. It is just almost two hours later and I got all the nuts and bolts in. It is dark out and I need to go in and make some dinner. But I am so excited to show you this. So all that's left is to peel off the plastic and find a level spot for it. And um, this took me a long time but I'm not that great with tools and I was using just a screwdriver and a wrench. Here's the side view in the dark. The hard part is going to be finding my tools. Okay guys, so I pulled it up on my iPhone so you could see that I got this from Amazon. It's a 7 by 3 raised metal garden bed and it was $66. I'm a Prime member, so the shipping was free, and it came in many different pieces that you can put together. It was easy but time-consuming, and it is from the TH store. So I'm thrilled to have it, and that's where the source is if you guys are interested. And there it is. I've decided to put it in the corner of my garden. I've been trying to civilize this corner for a long time. I've planted lots of things here, flowers and shrubs, Joe pie weed, all kinds of things. Uh, but this is really going to help me grow something productive. And um, it's just that I have really heavy clay soil and things like squashes just don't do well. But this was a fairly easy project and I hope that you guys don't mind that I didn't show its assembly. It was basically putting these screws in all the way around. So by the way guys, this did not come with instructions and perhaps there are some available online, but I went ahead and put it together um, just in a just by screwing it together. But one thing I did do was if I had a piece, this is my piece here, I overlapped it so it went behind the piece next to it on this side and then on the outside of the following piece. So I kind of alternated how I was overlapping it. Um, you know, in behind over here and on top of the next piece over here. So I, I hope that translates on camera but um, I think that's how it just kept its shape by overlapping in an alternating fashion. So that's how I did it guys and um, like I said there were no instructions telling me to do this but I just thought uh, it might be a good idea and it came out just fine. It looks like a really good shape. At the bottom I put some old dead wood from around my garden and I tilled up the bottom dirt just to give the roots more area to kind of grow down into and let the worms come up into what will be the new soil. But um, the dead wood, the purpose of the dead wood 
is what when it rots down it houses a lot of good bacteria and it hangs on to moisture and since this bed is so far from my house that's going to be a good thing on a hot summer's day by the way look at my burning bush it is at its peak it is a huge pop of color in my yard and it is a lovely structure all year but this is really when it shines isn't that beautiful guys Okay, I've had a chance to make a trip to Lowe's and whoa, was that a lot of hard work. These are the ingredients I'm going to be putting in my new raised bed. And um, let me show you what I've got. I went and bought three big bags of the peat moss. I bought two open bags of mulch. And that's a great way to get mulch half price. That is going to be my layer on the bottom. It's going to provide a bit of drainage. And like I said about my wood sticks, it's going to be retaining moisture. Wood will retain moisture. And because this bed is so far from my spigot, which is all the way down at my house, I'll be just watering this with watering cans. So I want to make sure that I have a moisture retentive layer. And I think that that mulch should do it. It's also going to fill up the bottom a little bit. So just two bags of those. I didn't want to do too much because it can zip, zap the nitrogen. Um, but I've got two bags of those. I'll be putting three bags of peat moss on top. And then on top of the peat moss, I'm going to put two bags of compost and manure. And that is a nice rich soil. None of my compost is ready, although I'm hoping it's ready in the spring. And then somewhere in there, Maybe after one of the bags of peat moss, I'm going to add in this biochar. And I cheated with this. I bought a big bag of Royal Oak hardwood charcoal. And it has nothing added. It is just wood that has been burned down to charcoal. Um, all it is is wood. So I'm putting that in there because my plan is to have squash and pumpkins in here. That was my big goal in getting this bed set up for next year and um, apparently pumpkins love biochar and ash so uh, it has some of the minerals it needs that's the only thing that isn't heavy by the way you can get a really big bag of that uh, at home depot or lowe's for about eight dollars and it's not a big deal to bring it home so we'll see i haven't done this before but i've heard good things about adding it to your pumpkin patch so let me get started. Again, I'll tell you the mulch layer will be first, then my peat moss, then my biochar. I'm just going to sprinkle out a little bit that I have. And then lastly, we're going to put the compost and manure on top. And the reason I'm putting it on top is the rain will push it down through the soil. And uh, the worms will come up from the bottom. The rain will come down from the top and it's all going to get mixed together. So I'm going to layer it like a casserole. I feel like I'm cooking. And um, I think that the worms and the rain will do the rest of the mixing. And of course, when I plant it up, I'll be doing a little bit of digging in there as well. So let me get started and then I'll show you how much it fills up. And like I said, if there's any room left, I'm hoping some of my compost piles will be ready in the spring and I can add some of my homemade compost into the mix. There's my mulch layer. It filled quite a bit of it. Good news, guys. After I added the mulch, I just put in two bags of the peat moss. Now, this might settle in throughout the winter, but I can always add more later especially some of my own compost so now that i've added my peat moss it's time to add the biochar layer okay i got my royal oak biochar all topped off there if i could give any advice about this is wear a mask when you do this step there's a lot of dust that gets into the air and i don't really think that's so good for your lungs and I'm going to add my last layer now, which is the compost and manure. And here it is, guys, all finished. Two days of work, hopefully has set me up for many years of gardening. 
and uh, I will be adding my own compost in in the spring and I am really excited to have this bed. I think I'm going to call it the pumpkin patch. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you're having fun in your fall garden.